and welcome to OSW Review, the old school wrestling video podcast. Filmed in glorious gravel vision and encoded with blast processing, we chronologically critique wrestling storylines, pay per view by pay per view. From Ireland, the Chaos Emerald Isle. It's your supersonic pal, Jay Hunter. Join us ever with the mad scientist, V1. What's the story? And our very own half rabbit, half robot bunny, Rabot. <laughs> OZ. There you When you see the picture of it, you okay. won't be happy. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> It's OSW 95, WWF Royal Rumble 1995, and it's coming up right now. Welcome now, guys. Happy days are here again. V1, how's it going, man? Not too bad, man. Delighted to be back. Delighted to be recording. Can't wait to talk more bollocks. Oh, yeah. OSC, good to see you, sir. And you, as always. Played a stormer with Survivor Series 94 last time, man. Bob Backlund, OSC, sitting in a tree. <laughs> yeah, and... Uh, M-A-R-K-I-A. <laughs> and he was in this pay-per-view for all of, what, one minute? Combined, yeah. Yeah, yeah. shame. The fall has been quick, and yeah. it has been deadly. <laughs> well, not the... Not, so, not, alive, the Iri- yeah. not the Irish deadly. The, uh, no, yeah. The yeah. American deadly. <laughs> the American deadly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, thank you so much to Lewis the Relinquished for the Seanic the Hedgehog intro. Not a Sean Connery thing. It's like a Sonic the Hedgehog and then Sean puts him in the way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. That was fucking awesome, mate. I loved it. I loved it. Ooh, we are barreling down the end of the new generation arc. We just have the WrestleMania pre-show and WrestleMania 11 and then we'll be done. Free. We'll be free. <laughs> <laughs> We'll have escaped the Savio Vega arc. Yes. I watched like seven weeks of Raw. Uh, heading into it. the build here. And lads, Hakushi, Kama, Henry Godwin, Duke Drosy, they're all here. We are in the thick of the worst era in the history of professional wrestling. And I want out. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, uh, you'll have to wait until our golden nuggers, what we'll do next time, and then we will, shall reveal our new story arc. How about that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Bit of ska, lads. Booker T. <laughs> Legend. Booker T. Yeah, well, uh, oh. he's, an, he's a fan. Oh. Yeah, he, asked us, he just tweeted us, say, yeah, so what bar am I? <laughs> Get it. Yeah. yeah. Out of fucking nowhere. Respect. Respect. Yeah. Respect. The best thing he's ever done. I don't care. The best thing he's ever done. You want respect. From this point on. I thought about it. I mean, this business has always been about three things. Money, power, and respect. Respect! You know, Joe gave me no respect. Respect! Joe gave Scott Hall no respect. Respect! This business was built on honor, dignity, and respect. Respect! So what bar is Booker T? Well, that's a long red jacket with gold trim and a leopard print collar. He is laid on me at Worldwide Wimpy. Ah, he is a nogger caramel, which is always good. Yeah, yeah it, it's yeah. that's the winner and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Luke Diegler, a leopard print lint chocolate ah. bunny. I love lint chocolate. That's my favorite chocolate after dairy milk. It's dairy milk's really, really fucking good. Yeah. This is fantastic. Lint's time. great. This is the bunny you bite the head off. It's yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. And you get a bit of that um, carnivore action too. Yeah. yeah. Oh, the nah. Jay Bearbeck says he is. Jay Bearbeck. A. <laughs> Wait, hang, hang on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Fucking amazing. He is a special edition leopard print can of Coca-Cola light. <laughs> okay. Mm. It's getting a big Carmella vibe off that. Yeah, someone actually did post a, a picture of her, but I, I hate her, so I didn't want to... <laughs> I, I just didn't want to put her over. <laughs> uh, we have a What Smokes. Yes, mm. get in. Sofa King Nice says he is I a... I how you pronounce that. A special edition leopard print... Packet of Marlborough. Classy. Fantastic, yeah. Bit of a kissy vibe off it, you know? Mm. And the actual winner, which is the one that I sent Booker T the picture of. Uh, we actually had a few people guessing this. So, at Geordie C, at Sharkbait, ooh ha ha. Wama la ding dong. At Buck Fucko. And Can't be saying that. At A Tale of Two Kirans. You all guessed correctly. He is indeed 
a catch bar. Yes, well done, well done, yeah. So cans of Coke to everybody. Thank you all for your uh, bars. You guys are awesome. And Booker T, you're also fucking awesome, mate. Yeah, it's amazing how little Booker T has been in OSW, 95 episodes in. Yep. Need a bit of Chet Lemon and Black Snow. Oh, Uh, cheers, Booker. Appreciate it, mate. Yes, Booker T's beating up everybody in the ring. Boom! Booker T just got on the big shot and shot. Boom! Booker T would have been down the big shot and shot. Boom! Big one. Oh. January, we are into 1995. Let's get you up to speed with the cheap pop culture rewind. Cheap pop culture rewind. Number one in the Irish charts. Ooh, hey, ooh, it's gotta be a jeans ad. I'm gonna do Spaceman, Babylon Zoo. Oh, <laughs> fucking hell. I'm gonna say Groove is in the Heart. Ooh, I like that. Ooh, that's kind of Austin awesome Powers. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It is Think Twice by Celine Dion. Baby, think twice for the second measure. <laughs> 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 On a half of an enemy <laughs> You have a lovely voice Very like Celine Dion <laughs> A latest Simpsons episode Put me down for an amazing episode Hank Scorpio uh, The PTA has disbanded Ooh. Season 6 episode 13's And Maggie Makes 3 ah. Ah. We are talking bowling alley. Yes. Oh, it's good. Oh, it's, I only watched that a couple of weeks ago. It's the uh, Do It For Her episode. Yes, which I have in my house. Well, in my own version of it. Yeah, for your daughter. Yeah. 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 I miss, you know, you don't watch Old Simpsons and then you watch it again. And it's like, holy shit. That's one of the most touching and beautiful moments in television yeah. history. All the episodes around this time were just perfect. You can't fault them. But my two favourite bits, the build-up to him firing the shotgun outside the bowling alley. <laughs> In- incredible. It's like a, uh, he reads advanced marketing and then beginner to marketing. <laughs> <laughs> and then the diction. Uh, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> and when he plays Burns he- yeah, head like, like, a, like bongo. a bongo and getting a pretty good sound out of that guy. Beautiful. What if someone played your head? Like a bongo. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Should resist, but I'm paralyzed with rage. And island rhythm. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. He's getting a pretty good sound out of that guy. Oh man, Ook. In films, the Colks, Richie Rich, playing in theaters. Decent, a decent movie. Do you have any quips? Just the McDonald's. That's what the movie is. McDonald's in your gaff. That's all that matters. <laughs> <laughs> you have your own McDonald's? No way! Not bad. And in video games, in the arcade, Sega released Daytona USA. Daytona! It's kidding me! Daytona! At home, officially the last NES game was released, Wario's Woods. Mm. And arguably the best game on the Amiga, Sensible World of Soccer. It uh, has like an amazing theme song as well. That's the goal scoring superstar hero. Oh, that's that. Doom, 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 doom. Fucking brilliant. What is happening in the world of wrestling? New Japan just had their January 4 Tokyo Domes show. More than 52,000 saw Inoki defeat Sting in the tournament finals. At our what? <laughs> ten, <laughs> ten and a half. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 24 <laughs> matches deep, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> in Smoky Mountain, Glenn Jacobs, your boy, barely 13 years in the business. <laughs> Debuted as the Unabomb, a diesel-type gimmick, Eddie Gilbert's bodyguard, who no-sold everything. He's actually, uh, he wrestled Taker down there, and uh, yeah, about three years before they do such at WrestleMania 14. I did not know that. It's weird. Holy shit. In ECW, any guesses what Shane Douglas' gimmick is? (laughs) Having a moan. Yes, uh, fighting anyone associated with Ric Flair. 
he had a 60 minute stinker with Tully Blanchard. It was actually 43 minutes and it was horrific because uh, Tully gassed out in the first couple of minutes so they just did rest hold and the crowd turned on it and the Joey Legend them. <laughs> so they, they got up, turned around, fold the arms and they were chanting, we want bingo. <laughs> Fucking awesome. I love that that happened to him. <laughs> <laughs> Two and seven eight. Oh, in WCW, Clash of the Champions 30 saw Hulk Hogan no-selling Vader's powerbomb. He just, like, hawked beer afterwards. That's actually <laughs> the same match where Hogan was knocked out unconscious and Randy Savage revives him by elbow dropping him yeah. on the top rope. <laughs> Amazing. Hogan! I told you! He woke up Hogan with a big elbow! And in the WWF, actually, here is the new booking hierarchy. Okay, Vince McMahon, he remains at the top. He's the primary booker. Then you have Pat Patterson and Bruce Richard. They're writing television. Then they rehire JR. He's back as Vince's assistant and TV producer. He won't be doing any announcing for the moment, but he will in September in your house three. This is our third in your house and Tim Ross. We are ready for action. Now that you're up to speed, let's start the show. up a white limo arrives not chuck norris but pamela anderson the cameraman tries to sneak a peek at her beaver <laughs> as all the locker room cat calls are going hey baby <laughs> <laughs> this massive white car shows up and gets out it's pamela anderson and all of the wrestlers sprint out to it so that they can have a fucking goosey and a pair of adder right up the front they put doink Mabel. Yeah. And our favourite, Tatanka. Boo. <laughs> I was like, surely this is written to have Jimmy Del Rey doing his gyration. <laughs> 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 she just oh, turn man. around, get back in the <laughs> <laughs> Like Grandpa Simpson when he goes <laughs> into the Polescos. <laughs> Fucking brilliant. Available only through Silver Vision. The official distributor of the World Wrestling Federation video. Haha! Uh -huh. Oh, I see, you're watching the WWE Network version. Two hours 42. Yes, I'm watching the live version uh, without the countdown, and it's two hours 44. And V1 <laughs> watching the Coliseum October! <laughs> Which is a whopping, honking. Three hours 11. No, I'm not sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry I didn't do it earlier. <laughs> uh, Steve, are you grateful for at Tim or Joe hooking us up? Because my DVD broke. I mean, it's very nice of him that he did this, but, you know, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you'll have to jump in whenever there is a call saying my clothes off. Because I call the same my clothes off. <laughs> <laughs> Tonight is my night. 30 men in the Royal Rumble. There's only one survivor. 29 men are going down, and this Royal Rumble belongs to me, the King of Hearts. Everybody's going down to me. Owen with the OOC special. Mm. Tonight, the Royal Rumble 1995, 30 men, 29 are going down to me, the King of the Hearts, Owen Hart, the King of Hearts, <laughs> 29, 29 men, Royal Rumble win. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just what did you expect from this guy? And that was me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next was Captain Lou, who just screamed at the camera. Very bad. And then lastly, we had a uh, British Bulldog, who says that he's in shape and he's willing to go the distance. Is everyone else? Ooh. Mm. It was actually, okay, it was one of the better promos I've ever heard coming from him, because he's not a very good promo. And thank you, Coliseum Home Video. Thank you, yeah, that was utterly useless. Because <laughs> I'm willing to go the distance. Are the rest of you? Welcome everyone to the Sunshine State. Welcome to the 1995 WWF Royal Rumble. 
It's the WWF Royal Rumble, January 22nd, 1995, from the University of South Florida Sundome in Tampa, Florida, with 230,000 TVs tuned in at home. That's up 25,000 from last year. The attendance is 10,000, down 4,500 from last year, with a gate of how much per ticket? Last year was $11. Yeah. We're in the diesel era. Nobody wants to come to this show. Not even the wrestlers. No, <laughs> nobody. I'm going to say 1050. I think it's still going to be higher than last year, just because they need more money. <laughs> and it's a general way of things. I'm going to say $13. Ooh, uh, $14. Okay. okay. Up three from last year. Commentators tonight are Vincent Kennedy McMahon and Jerry the King Lawler. Vince with another throat-burning stormer, welcoming us to the Sun Dome. By the way, Dome... That's incredibly misleading. You kind of think of Toronto Sky Dome, 53,000. Pontiac Silver Dome, 80,000. The Sun Dome, 10,000. Mm. It's just like, oh, okay, I, I have an igloo. That's a dome. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Fucking hell. Charlatans. What's on the card? Three title matches. The World, Icy and Tag, Taker's Bout, and the Royal Rumble match itself. Fuck yeah. This is a perfect card for a Royal Rumble pay-per-view. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yes, and the winner is going on to face the WWF champion at WrestleMania 11. This rule came in two years ago at the 93 Rumble, which Yokozuna won. That's one where Macho went... Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there we go! He threw him out from the floor! contest is for the Intercontinental Championship. It's Double J, Jeff Jarrett with the roadie versus champion Razor Ramon. It's the bad man defending against music man with the I like the bumming man. Mm. <laughs> Vince picks up UK viewers staying up late. Lot are saying it's two and a half minutes past midnight. I was like, man, thanks for acknowledging European viewers. Uh, even today, Raw ends at 4am. Yeah, people sometimes moan at me like, why do you give your Raw toss the day after? I was like, because I'm not going to watch it live. Like, <laughs> I don't watch Mania live. I'm like, what makes you think I'm going to watch Raw live? <laughs> Jared gets an arm drag on Razor, and that's enough to warrant a hot dog. Jackie Farr goes through it. Ha ha ha! And we get it in stereo as the roadie's outside, and he does it too. Loved it. Bringing the roadie in has only been a net positive. It's really added to Jared's gimmick. I think it's brought him from comedy mid-card to, like, a solid mid-carder. Yeah, agreed. One issue that it guarantees interference in every single Jarrett match. That's true. Which never went away. (laughs) He was booking overbooked finishes in TNA 15 years later. Oh, come on. Obvious psychological tactics here on the part of Double J. A true roadie, James gives Jarrett a towel to dry himself. A bottled water for hydration, halting the action completely. Dead stop. Awesome. Great heater. It's great. Dub pin reversal spots includes a sunset flip and hello. Hello. <laughs> Has none of it and drops to his knees, threatening a knob to the face. <laughs> <laughs> It takes three pinfall attempts for the ref to see Double J's feet on the ropes. Jarrett gets a shocking amount of offense in, chucking Razor to the outside, kayfabe injuring Razor's knee. Rhodey capitalizes in the confusion with a chop block to Razor's popliteal fossa, back of his knee. It's too effective as Razor is fucking counted out. If you don't get back in the ring and finish this match, one way or the other for one, two, three, then you are a big coward. Yeah, what kind of man is he, McMahon? It must be chicken. So Jarrett wins the match, but not the belt. But Jeff Jarrett cuts an impromptu promo saying since Razor's wearing yellow trunks, he should also paint a yellow streak down his back. Hey, you're not a chico. You're a chicken. Cheep, 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 cheep. Mesmerized by Jarrett's awesomeness, the ref undoes his decision and restarts the match. That's but, but, massively but, heelish. The ref can't do. make that decision. The bell has been rung. Yeah, he's just making a second match. Yes. You know, it was only five seconds after Razor was too injured to wrestle. He's putting Razor at risk. Yes. Yeah. Sack him. <laughs> <laughs> 
I actually perked up immediately because Jarrett's finisher is the figure four and Razor's injured his left knee. So I go, oh shit. Oh my, oh my, my, come on. I'm willing it to happen from January 95. Double J trances the bad man who's only able to offer surprise pinfall attempts. Look at Jarrett. He did not get it. It is over now, McMahon. That's Double it. Jay has a figure four left Finish of the match. Music Mang slaps on the figure four in the middle of the ring as Razor howls in pain. Hall rallies round, building to a breath rope follow-away slam. That is reversed. Jarrett's about to walk the Razor's edge, man, but his bad wheel gives out. Jarrett takes advantage with a roll-up and one, two, three. After 1806, Double J holds the double G, double O, double L, double T. <laughs> the ghouls. <laughs> ghouls. Hold on! Fucking two, three, oh, man. He got him, McMahon! Is it true? What do you think, Ig? Totally enjoyed the interference. The roadie stuff, the strutting, the razor being goaded back into the ring. But the actual in-ring stuff itself, I just thought it was very mid-90s, kicky, punchy, rest hold. Uh, <gasps> I know. I don't know. I, 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 I And so was I. I just wanted to see more from these two who were two of my favourites from that era. I know they probably have another 50 pay-per-view matches in the mid-90s. <laughs> Because that's all I remember. And Goldust gets thrown into the mix at some point. They're always, just, all the three of them are always wrestling. I, I, yeah, I enjoyed the shenanigans outside of that. In-ring stuff was just, to me, boring. Ah, oh, shit. B1, what do you think, mate? Uh, I have very opposite thoughts. I really like this match. Um, oh, rest hold. Yeah. Oh, second rest hold. <laughs> I've been watching a lot of wrestling from late 94 and early 95. And I thought this match was significantly better than what we were getting at the time. Like, yeah. so yeah, I it's a can, damning indictment of the Wimbley show. It really is, man. Like, this is a terrible era. Both men were moving really quick. I thought they looked sharp. Jared was awesome. Every time he got anything done, he'd, he'd like hot dog, he tapped the temple. Two he, fingers, Steve. Two finger tapped the temple. Rody was brilliant. He, he really added to the match. Razor, who has done really nothing over the course of the last couple of months, even in the build of this match, he was involved in one match and one tag match, and that was it. He looked good. So yeah, big dirty thumbs up from me. I very, very much enjoyed it. Oh, I see. I know exactly what you mean, but I enjoyed it anyway. I was just so happy for Jarrett, and I was happily surprised of how much offense he got in, how strong he was booked in the first half, especially. Uh, I wish he won with the figure four, though. Like, Razor injured his left knee, and he can't get a submission win out of that. Even via ref stoppage or something. Uh, yeah, I guess it, that it's unheard of in the 80s and 90s. I think since Brett lost it, the title has really fallen very far. They did nothing with Razor ever really as champion like when he got a first he was put over DiBiase at like Royal Rumble 93 yes and he had one or two other decent matches but in terms of angles and feuds he never really got decently booked and so because he as champion wasn't booked it meant that the title wasn't heavily featured yeah he was he wrestled Diesel uh, got the belt on him but that match was about Diesel and Sean yeah so Razor was an ancillary character there. Uh, yeah, sad bananas. Yes, Vince, I'm standing by waiting for our new intercontinental champion, Double J, Jeff Jarrett, but he's not here yet. Live exclusive. Oh. <laughs> Stephanie Wyand. Who? Stephanie Wyand, WWF's newest backstage reporter. She debuted Christmas Eve edition of WWF Mania. Santa George wheels in a giant present for Todd, who's uh, paired his beautiful purple dinner jacket with stonewashed jeans. Yes. Nice. Making him a cabaret timeout. <laughs> <laughs> it's his new WWF Mania co-host. But like, he doesn't, you know, that's not really a present. He doesn't own Stephanie Wine. And that kind of has connotations as well. Yeah. <laughs> so she was widely decried as awful and annoying. Her role was immediately reduced and she was gone in a matter of months. Uh, hey, still co-hosted the first ever In Your House pay-per-view. Yes. Mm. How many of you out there have wanted to sell it all, move to Florida and own a beautiful home and you could... It could have One of your Colleen's maybe? Back in the day, Saturday morning wrestling mania, yeah, she she would have been all over that, yeah. <laughs> her and her teeth, like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
the same thing written down later on. Um, <laughs> are you sure you're not Helen's daughter? <laughs> <laughs> Stephanie doesn't have a guest yet, so she just throws to Todd, who's opening presents with Pamela Anderson. All right, Steph, thank you very much. Pamela Anderson, look at all this stuff in here. I know, I can't believe it. I'm being spoiled. All these wrestlers are so generous. This is incredible. Look at this. Oh, what have you got there? Godwin's piggy bank? I actually like that. Yeah. Head Shrinker's mini skull? No. no. <laughs> no. Uh, of all the presents, they're all of wrestlers and their gimmicks. I noticed Lex is the only one who didn't pay for a present. <laughs> As even Sean has an 8x10, but he bought a frame, you know? Mm-hmm. Lex just grabbed the shirt from the merch stand. I love it. But what if it's too tight, Billy? <laughs> <laughs> and your t-shirts are too tight too, Billy! Now that Jarrett's arrived, he uh, goes to talk to Stephanie Wyand. Jarrett says he's going to celebrate. That's it. Yeah, he pretty much just blows her off. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't not great, baby. Yes! Yes! yes. <laughs> Double J raging victorious. Let's go back to ringside. Then uh, Paul Bear shouldn't be allowed at ringside. First I'll tell the rest of these tax cheats, and then I'll tell you. No one, and I mean no one, will rest in peace until you've paid all your taxes. Match number two, it's the final payment. OSC's boy, IRS versus The Undertaker. Lucky IRS is out with the million dollar man because otherwise he wouldn't have any music. Unlucky The Undertaker, he's wrestling IRS. Man, this feud. They've been building this since October. That's four months of build for this. (laughs) Four months of IRS. (laughs) Sweating Uh, on you. Yeah, and talking about Undertaker not paying his taxes. He's been talking about taxes. Yeah. Sports people don't pay their taxes. Undertaker is a sports people. (laughs) I bet you he didn't pay the income tax on that urn. And that's your feud. 60,000 saw The Undertaker at a monster truck rally. What? By the many moons of Ahamkara. (laughs) I was like, we never get to see it, but WWF wrestlers had monster trucks too. Oh, spicy. It was called Gravedigger. That's an awesome name. Would it suit his character to make an entrance in a monster truck? Can he have, like, 1920s monster villains, like the creature from the Black Lagoon, with him? Ooh. Yete. The Yeble! <laughs> Zodiac. Yes. Nah. <laughs> How would you get the monster truck into the arena? On wheels. <laughs> <laughs> the Undertaker arrives, now with a whistling wind sound effect. <laughs> Thank you, Stephen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jesus, Undertaker is second match on the card. It's been a while. Vince notes, new Intercontinental Champ Jarrett is really whooping it up as IRS Pearl Harbor's Taker with a drop kick. No sells it, worse than OOC. <laughs> 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 IRS regroups on the outside with Ted DiBiase. I'm like, oh my God. Setting up the Million Dollar Corporation must have been insanely expensive. Million Dollar Man, his outfit has gotten cheaper twice. Because he started off with a beautiful tuxedo. Then he moved down to a kind of like a shell suit, a sequined shell jacket <laughs> you know, that he got in Liverpool. Uh, and now he's just in a regular ass suit. Oh, you know? man. Can't even afford the little dollar signs on his lapel. Fuck. By the way, this is the look of 95. Dark Side of the Ring, they posted his picture. Hey, look at his 1995 roster. And Sean and Paul Bearer are wearing the same outfit. <laughs> oh, me meow. I don't know who's, you know, who am I slagging with that one, you know? <laughs> Funeral suits are not fashionable. Like, <laughs> there's a reason you only wear them at funerals. <laughs> Taker goes primary school and DiBiase's involvement gets thwarted. So Ted brings out two druids. Who are they? Big tall lummox. Small, farty lummox. Big tall guy is one of the Blue Brothers. I knew. Okay, so I didn't know who it was. And then I watched a rumble and the Blues came out and I was like, that's who it fucking was. No one else is that useless. <laughs> <laughs> and the small guy is Gigolo Jimmy Del Rey. Really? Yeah. Uh, Two do, paychecks. Doing tonight. double duty. Yeah. yeah. He deserves it. Uh, oh my god, imagine the druid came out and started going all sexy. Like, <laughs> yeah. That would have been better, actually. They shaky shaky the ropes and stop Taker going middle school. Just looking at the druids, bumbling gimps. And I hate 
the size discrepancy. Like, Druid's supposed to be anonymous, nameless, Legion, could be anybody. But if you saw them backstage talking, it's like, yeah, that's you. Can I just point out, there were two blue brothers. You could have just had two massive Druids. Yeah. This is not rocket science. Yeah. Uh, the crowd stamped their feet, rumbling in support of Taker, and Vince pats himself on the back saying, Rumble? Royal Rumble! <laughs> <laughs> but the Undertaker's fighting IRS, so they pipe down within seconds. Incredible. <laughs> Uh-oh. And we're talking trouble with a capital T here for Erwin R. Scheister. Tigger takes the tax man up for a tombstone and daintily prods the druids off the apron. He's like, boink. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking incredible. IRS, big clothesline right off. And I'd love if IRS won this match. <laughs> Wouldn't that just be amazing? Oh my God. <sighs> It'd be so good. Like, clean. Yeah, yeah. Not happening, mate. Taxman gets caught with a choke slam. Helps put his hands in position for the pin. One, two, three, and Taker wins. Is that enough? That's enough! I cannot believe it! It's a nothing match. A pointless match, like most Undertaker matches. From now for 18 months, maybe? Until Mankind hits the... Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, whoa, oh, oh, whoa, oh, oh. whoa, hang on. He has a stormer at WrestleMania 11. <laughs> <laughs> Spoilers. Uh -huh. Bad build, bad match, bad finish, bad payoff, bad wrestling. I hated it. This was awful. Seven on ten. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, that's 1221 of my life. I'm never getting back. This is an embarrassment, an incredible misuse of Taker. Yeah, I know IRS, you know, he sucks the life out of you, but like these crony druids icing on the shit cake. Utterly useless. They're not over. They're not getting anyone in the million dollar corp over. By the way, they're a massive bunch of geeks. They never win yeah, anything. Yeah. You know, and it's a shame, like even good wrestlers like Bam Bam Bigelow turn into jobbers when they go into this um Saddled stable. with these lads, yeah. 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 Tatanka's never been the same. <laughs> Shh, I'm to talk about Tatanka. Post-match taker sends the druids packing as King Kong Bundy enters the ring for a big standoff. And look at that. Bundy showing no fear. Bundy actually looks like a bit of a threat now. We'll find out that he isn't. <laughs> but right now, you know, that's decent. Gives a bit of a beat down, then drops a knee on Taker and then splash on Taker off the canvas, obviously. Taker, love the selling, plays dead, barely moves. Love that very kind of Michael Myers-y stuff, which is the best thing that Taker's doing in this era is the Michael Myers kind of... He's still doing it, yeah, but it's the most interesting thing about mm. it. Uh... <laughs> King Kong Bundy here, the fucking cut of him. <laughs> he it's looks like a peeled potato. Yes. And I love his jumping Schwab elbow. He gets, he gets within six inches off the bat. <laughs> IRS grabbing the you urn! Fuck me. Yes, IRS has stolen the urn and the heels leave cackling. <laughs> Will this be Taker's worst WrestleMania opponent? Find out next time. WrestleMania 11, OSW 97. Pre-taped backstage promos for our WWF title match. Diesel says, not now. Oh, thanks. Uh, Brett says, <laughs> what's there to talk about? <laughs> thanks, lads. <laughs> Absolutely useless. I mean, let's talk about it. What's there to talk about? Well, you know, it's a very important match. You know, that was then, this is now, Todd. It's not the time, all right? WWF Action Zone level interviews. Even the director didn't want to do it, and he cuts off Todd. <laughs> He's in the middle of talking, no. Wow. Good night. I got to, I got to think, okay. All right, fine. Folks. Yes, indeed, there we have it. I wouldn't say just a little differently. Number three is the WWF Championship bout. It's challenger Brett Hitman Hart versus the champion Diesel. Diesel. Steve, what is the build to this matchup? Brett was kind of a heel here, right? Mm, I, okay, Brett Hart. He was cutting promos from at home. By the way, he's wearing mismatched denims. 
the like jeans and the top are different tones. All I care about is getting my title shot. All I want is my world title. I don't care if the fans like Diesel more than me because this is war and I'm coming to beat him. So, you know, he like he kind of teased that he was going to have a bit more of an edge. Diesel cuts the shittest world champion promo I've ever heard. He's sitting there and he's cocky and he's like, Brett, you wear pink. Ha. I wear a man's color, gold and silver. <laughs> but after the match, if we want to talk about colors, we'll both be black and blue. Oh, that that was the bill. <laughs> How about black and blue? I'm sure come Royal Rumble, we'll both be experiencing those colors. Hitman's out first. Ooh, more prominent Titan Tron. It's now it's right above the entrance way as opposed to off to the side. That was pretty cool. Bit of milestone because that's just how it is from now till the Attitude Era. Until now. like yeah. It hasn't changed in nearly 30 years. Mm. <laughs> and see... <laughs> see the, <laughs> see the, the Titan Tron of Diesel is the truck coming at you. It's like, get the fuck out of the way. <laughs> Seamless fate, the glass shattering in the entrance, and Diesel appears. Wow, yeah, he got the Stone Cold Steve Austin WrestleMania 13 mm. entrance. Mm. Fuck. A lot of people say he's the most dangerous man in the world. Whoa! Look out! Oh, my goodness! He greets the New York Giants guys in the crowd, including LT, Lawrence Taylor. Lawrence Taylor is famous for two things. Any given Sunday, and... This pay per view. <laughs> well, you know, mania. Uh, no? even then, even more then, famous this is this? more the the bomber moment in this pay per view is what sticks out in my mind more than the WrestleMania. Oh wow! Pay -per -view. Yeah, yeah. Now you're gonna have Americans coming back saying, "Oh no, he was a footballer," and da 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 da. No, he's only known here because of this and any given <laughs> in Sunday. In every other country yes. in the world, <laughs> yes, he's known for bomber. <laughs> <laughs> A timely appearance from LT as Super Bowl 29 was next Sunday, 29th of January. Uh, the Chargers beat the 49ers 49 to 26. Ding, ding, ding. Oh, I love this. Brett goes for the gusto. Oh, he's like, I'm sick of this shit. Give me what's mine attitude. He goes right at Diesel, grabbing his leg and sending Nash scrambling to the ropes. Then he shoves Diesel and gets into a fist fight with a lad half a foot taller than him. Nice little fuck you. <laughs> Boss. Here. Oh, look at that! Look at that! I told you, McMahon, it's not gonna be pretty! Oh, big hair. Brett shows off a more aggressive streak whilst working on the left knee, softening the truck man up en route to a sharpshooter. He throws Diesel's leg into the ring post, follows up with a leg grapevine, and then a Jarrett figure four. Diesel reaches the ropes, and Brett is slow to break the hold. Hmm. Wait a minute, the hitman's not releasing the hold! Ah! He's hanging on! Not letting the champion catch his breath, Hitman dives through Brett's rope, tackling Nash on the outside with a suicide dive, and follows up with punches. Going up oh! Diesel, Diesel, if you please. <laughs> <laughs> What's Diesel got? A shit backbreaker and a shit one-shoulder torture rack. Okay. Brett tears off his wrist tape and uses it to sequester Diesel in the corner. Holy shit, that's cheating! Mm. Brett! I've never seen that before! Oh, oh no, wait a minute. Brett's signature bulldog, signature side rush and leg sweep, Brett's rope pinpoint elbow drop. Hart's forwardness is his undoing as he's caught with a second suicide dive and is driven into the ring post. And Diesel capitalizes in the middle of the ring with his jackknife powerbomb. One, two, and Sean interferes! Ah, fuck! Hey, wait a minute! Oh wait, there's no bell. And the ref orders the match to continue. Very dodgy refereeing on this show. This is this match and the Jarrett match. Damn it, Dilo. Damn it, Dilo, <laughs> indeed, yeah. Brett feigns a knee injury and suckers Diesel in for a near fall. Brett goes back to the well with a figure four, ties up the leg in the ropes, and is again slow to break the hold. Hart gets a chair and fucking swings at Diesel's knee. Sandwiching it between the ring post. No DQ. Look at this. <laughs> Brett readies for a sharpshooter, and the crowd boo Brett. Ah, I think he missed. No, it had to hit the kneecap too. I'm not so sure. 
Sharpshooter replied, will Truck Meng submit? Owen belts it to the ring, attacks Brett, removes the turnbuckle pad and throws him neck first into the exposed turnbuckle ring. No DQ. The match must continue. This match must continue. I cannot believe it. Minute, there's not going to be anything left. The rope in from behind. Wow. The official. Finish of the match, Brett runs Diesel into the official, knocking him out, prompting Shawn Michaels, Bob Backlund, Owen Hart, Jeff Jarrett and the roadie to hit the ring and pummel the downed combatants. Look at this, look what they're doing to Bret Hart, look what they're doing to Diesel. Finally, the bell rings as WWF officials, including Wurzel, Bring and Payday Pat hit the ring to break it up. After 2719, the official decision is the ref blames himself for not <laughs> <laughs> for not being able to control the match and declares the bout a draw. A draw. It, well, like it wasn't even like a double DQ. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. A draw. Yeah. That's just lame. I think it's it's like it's not a draw. It's a no contest. Yeah. 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 Contest. A no contest too. Yeah, Ook, what do you think, mate? The story of this match was that now Diesel, everybody, Diesel is now on par with Brett. Hence, why they semi turned Brett heel and got him all aggressive. Because the only way Brett thinks he can beat Diesel is by bending the rules and, in some cases, breaking the rules. I thought it was okay. A little bit tired of the own interference now. Like, yeah, you yeah. know, you're done, mate. Yeah, cut off, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think this is one of the good Diesel matches. Oh, God. I think. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. No, at this point in his career, he's shit in the ring. I don't think he gets much better, but uh, he's shit in the ring. He's shit out of the ring. He's not even a good promo yet. No, no. And he will be. Yeah. Obviously, he'd be one of the best talkers in, in the business. But right now, he's so bland and everything about him is so bland and it's not Kevin Nash's fault this is how he was booked to be it bored me and I got up after the the first match I got up and did something and said okay I need the right mindset I'm gonna enjoy this <laughs> did you have the IRS match <laughs> <laughs> and I the problem is I used all my enjoyment for the IRS match so I, I was worn out by the time no I didn't enjoy this oh wow okay I hated this match oh wow yeah I thought the build was poor. I thought the promos leading up were bad. I didn't care about the match. The match didn't pay off. Diesel wasn't lifted up. Brett was pushed down a bit. So it's, it's like for me, it's all negatives. Um, the finish was completely overbooked. This was like a TNA 2006 Jarrett yeah, yeah, world yeah. title match. Yeah, yeah. It was silly. Didn't enjoy it a bit. Wow. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Uh, geez. Um, I... Love this match. <laughs> oh my God. I love Brett's dogged tenaciousness, like going full pelt to take back his goddamn world title belt. Like you could feel his motivation here is like frustration with this situation. Give me what's mine. I'm taking it. Testing the waters for a future heel turn. And so I thought it felt creatively very fresh. Like I was just marveling at Brett. I thought this was a ring psychology masterclass. Brett made all these little tweaks to his offense to make him the bad guy, and so Diesel the good guy. So he had kind of low-level, excusable heel tendencies, like they bum rush the ref and knock him out. It's like, okay, that, that could have been an accident. And him just doing a lot more closed fists, punch. It was like, okay, that's fair enough. Then you had the kind of medium heel tendencies, like doggedly returning to the same submission hole to try grind out a win, like Ken Shamrock would do that. He'd go back to the ankle lock over and over and over, trying to get the same thing. What about taking longer to release a hold? And also, so, um, using the ropes for leverage, which Brett wouldn't usually do. And then you have the big whopping heel tendencies, which a gallant babyface would never do. Like feigning a knee injury to try to get a cheap win. And this is for the world title. Is this how you want to win your belt? Brett, come on, mate. That's Owen Hart sneaky. And then the biggest one, using a chair on a guy's knee, smashing it against the ring post. It's like, what the fuck? Obviously, like, it didn't make sense to not DQ them on the first or second until it was actually out of control. So that was a terrible TNA Jared finish. But no, like, I thought it was an incredible bout. Only kind of technical negative for WWF, not me personally, is that Brett trounced Diesel. He completely outshone him. Uh, you're trying to establish Diesel as Brett's equal, and he's the world champion and he didn't win his first pay-per-view you know the meat of the match was all about brett working heel which felt very fresh and as a result i I found this literally the most compelling kevin nash match i've ever seen how effective was it 
Brett got the crowd to boo him and by default cheer Diesel, but remain babyface. I was like, that's fucking clever, mate. Masterly done. Like, when I watched this, I was like, this is what going back and watching old wrestling, finding out these gems are all about. Uh, but no, he hated it. <laughs> 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 all your points are great. Like, Brett was great, but I hated the match. I hated it. <laughs> I hated it. <laughs> but Brett's awesome. Yes, it is. Well, already it's time for the Ad Break Questionnaire. <laughs> uh, at our Ad Break Questionnaire, which wrestler punched a fan at a comic convention and got away with it? Hmm. Answer after the break. Ooh, it's Dancing Jesus! Dee, 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 dee. If there's a better use for the internet, I haven't found it. If you've committed a crime and you want to confess, click yes. Otherwise, click no. You have chosen no, meaning you've committed a crime but don't want to confess. A paddy wagon is now speeding to your home. Hey! While you wait, why not buy a police cap or t-shirt? You have the right to remain fabulous. Ooh, so before the break, we asked you, which wrestler punched a fan at a comic convention and got away with it? I'll give you three guesses. Oh, okay. Harley Race is one guess. The racist. The racist. Terry Funk. And who's that guy in this pay-per-view that appears out of nowhere? Murdoch. Dick Murdoch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, those are my three Dick guesses. Dick fucking Murdoch. Yes. I'm going to say Chaz of the, of oh, the Headbangers. Oh, what a great Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Swerve, actually, it was The Undertaker. Oh. Swerve in MTV's Downtown. As it was an animated show by Chris Pranoski. Uh, we got one season in 99, one and done. Dude, Fruity, he slags The Undertaker for being a fake wrestler, but he also angers some guys in a Sailor Moon costume. <laughs> this is at a Comic Con. And The Undertaker saves the day. There you go. Nice. There we go. Swerve, you go I, th- I was re- Jim Cornette. I was thinking you were going to say corny and go, Swerve, he's not a wrestler. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah. yeah. See you next time, and thanks for playing. I know we had our words, but man, I hate those guys. Adults dressing up in weirdo costumes. Hey man, thanks. That was unbelievable. I am truly afraid of you now. I guess I was wrong. And don't you forget it. Hey, can I get a picture? You want a picture? You got it. Todd. I'm sorry, what? My my fuzzy little purse is right over there. Oh, sure, I'll get it for you. Backstage, Todd whispers that Pamela Anderson is changing behind the screen. Then peeking out from behind the flimsy wicker partition, she asks for her purse and Todd just like knocking over everything (laughs) to get it for her. I thought that was great. Todd is so good, he's worth his weight in gold. Oh, thank you. Stephanie Wyand is with OC's boys, Thurman, Sparky Plug, and the 123 Kid before their tag title bout up next. Little bitch, he's so happy and grateful. And Suck Up Holly says they're like the San Diego Chargers getting their title shot at the Super Bowl. 123 Kid, so we've got a tag title match coming up. We're so excited and we're also so nervous. (laughs) Like, you are an actual bitch. You are a shoot, bitch. <laughs> also, uh, Bob, mate, shave them sideburns. Oh. He's just, it's glorious. Uh, yeah, he's always had that as- a- affliction. <laughs> <laughs> affliction? <laughs> you know, that's right, Stephanie. You know, this is a big op- opportunity for us. We're so excited and we're so nervous. You know, we've made it this far. We've got two matches down and we got one more to go. Right, Bob? Move over John Madden's Telestrator, Bobby Heenan's Brain Scan, and Johnny Giles scrawling on the telly. Yeah. <laughs> it's the King's Magistrator. The Royal Etch-A-Sketch tries and fails to draw himself kissing Pamela Anderson. Uh, he's a good artist. He is a good artist. He shit the bed with this one, didn't he? 
it took him ages and it, it, it looked like you know that animation of Dougal when it's like dreams and reality yeah. <laughs> that's what it was like. that's me McMahon giving Pamela Anderson a little kiss on the cheek and that's why she's smiling so big Match number four is for the vacant WWF Tag Team titles. It's the Million Dollar Corporation's Bam Bam Bigelow and Tatanka versus the Lightning Kid and Sparky Plug. After Sean and Diesel's friendship dissolved, WWF vacated the tag belt. Oh, what a pittance. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I got this. What a pittance. WWF held a tag tournament for the belts and are seeing the finals tonight. They didn't make it clear, but Billy Gunn was kayfabe injured in a rodeo accident. A rodeo accident. Nice. So they couldn't enter the tournament and has asked that the Guns face the winners tomorrow night on Raw. It's like, the fucking cheek. Yeah. Everyone else had to win two matches to get in here. Like, Bammer and Taddy had to roll over men on a mission, then the head shrinkers to earn their spot, and the kid and Holly roasted, well done, well done, and bested the bodies. <laughs> These cunts just ask for it, and they get it. Yeah, it was bullshit. Was there a shoot reason for this kayfabe injury? Did they have a plan? They just didn't want them to job. Didn't want who to job? The guns. Keeping them strong. But, no, but like, why couldn't they just go to the final and win? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can, uh, can I say um, the baby faces came out the Bob Holly song <laughs> because it's a good song <laughs> what are, you know go, no, okay what's kids song see the <laughs> I have no clue. Okay. song in Braille. Like. <laughs> Morse code. <laughs> um, I will give it to you. His song is not memorable, but Bob Holly is not over, and the one, two, three kid is. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, they're huge bitches. Like, the characters are plucky, <laughs> probably not going to win, happy to be there. <laughs> you know? Um, I, okay, I call Sean Waltman's character a bitch. You know, I, I'm sure Sean Waltman is a lovely guy. But his character, a meek, grateful, low-confidence dude. Like, I submit to you the most damning evidence that he is, in fact, a little bitch. In Your House 6, Razor versus 123 Kid. Razor wins clean, all right? And post-match, Ramon... He breaks out talcum powder, one, two, three kids on his back. Razor lifts his legs up like you would with a newborn child. And he's got a talc in his bottom. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, DiBiase comes on puts the stop there. He's got a powder in his bottom. Oh, oh splicey. In the World Wrestling Federation, let's see how no, 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 no. Razor is. Come on, big man, this is embarrassing. That's humiliating. What do you mean? Oh, wait a minute, take DiBiase again. I think there's a chapter in WWE 2K20 where you wrestle X-Pac in a diaper match, and he's oh. and and he's a big baby in a nappy. Yeah. But he's, he's already big... he's all he always wears a nappy. What's the difference? <laughs> now it's on the outside. Like. <laughs> he's wearing two nappies now. <laughs> The gimmick is that the kid was a little crybaby and like they'd have the here's a picture of him wearing a diaper and like he literally when he faces Diesel he's literally wheeling a pram <laughs> to the ring. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. He's a shoot bitch. <laughs> he's a bitch. <laughs> a little bitch. <laughs> oh my fucking god. Oh man. <sighs> <sighs> you were right all along. <laughs> Wait a minute, look at that! Look at Ted DiBiase popped the kid and he has a stroller with a, with a razor bear in it. Look at this. Ding, ding, ding. Although McMahon puts the heels over, calling Bammer an awesome monster, he also notes that neither Bammer or Tatanka has held a championship between them. So you're not that great. <laughs> and as a tag team, they're not the most winningest team. <laughs> um, lots of losses, lots of DQs, yeah. lots of countouts, yeah. lots of bullshit fucking finishes. Yeah. Sparky Plug hits some drop kicks. Bammer pumps one, two, three up, gets awesome height, and Kid reverses what would be a devastating powerbomb into a Hurricane Rana. Impressive. Nearly lands right on his neck, mm. but pulls it off. Cool move. Still a bitch. 
Uh, it's just not happening for the baby faces. Tandem team back elbow, but Bigelow isn't having it and clotheslines him. Tandem tag team top rope splashes are both caught. The dual sports athlete hmm, gets trounced, big scoop slam, and one, two, three needs to break up the pin, but hits Holly instead. Lads! Uh, <laughs> Taddy with a top rope chop to Holly, but he ducks and hits Bammer. Ah, lads! <laughs> <laughs> it's just a comedy of errors, yeah. isn't it? Sunset flip to Bigelow and Aloha Bow. Aloha Bow. Denied with a whoopsie. Kid is just looking on at his mate being decimated. Wonderful uh, poodle perm. Yeah, with the less poodleish mullet back. Yeah, 60% on the cane phrase. Pac's offense is useless. He gets the hot tag, cleans house with a top rope dropkick to Bammer, dropkick to Tatty, follow up with a cannonball to the outside. But Kid's moves are so ineffectual, Tatanka's still able to come back in and break up a pinfall. So his moves have like 10 hit points, you know? (laughs) Finish of the match, DiBiase sequesters the referee, who gets on the bottom rope so he can tower over DiBiase. You like that? Yeah. Bammer is about to moonsault. Tatty bounces off the ropes, knocking Bigelow off. Holly forearms Bull Buffalo out as Kid musters up all of his strength, drapes an arm over Bammer, and one, two, three! The Kid and Sparkplug are the new WWF Tag Team Champions in 1532. One, two, three, go! I think you mentioned this a couple of episodes ago saying, oh, I think like one, two, three and Holly held the titles for like a while. And in my head, I was going bollocks. <laughs> no way they put the world tag team championships on these goofs. <laughs> I was shocked watching this. I was absolutely shocked. I have no memory of this at all. Yeah, I'd say it was for like a week. And, you know, I'm sure the Quebecers are going to come back, <laughs> you know? Well. A singular day. Okay, and then the Quebecers come back because the Quebecers just had the belts for fucking 10 years in the 90s. (laughs) Um, So yeah, you're building up the Million Dollar Corporation. I mean, your vicious, big, briefy, deadly Million Dollar Corporation members got beaten convincingly. Trounced. Yes, (laughs) trounced. By a pair of goofs, beaten nice and clean, middle of the ring, and Tatanka couldn't even see a 400 pound man on the ropes ready to do his moonsault covered in flames <laughs> <laughs> yes with his head with a big tattoo on his head absolutely stupid i was relieved though that for once in the mid 90s a baby face tag team held the belts because occasionally you'd have like the likes of this or the head shrinkers winning the belts but it's always a fucking heels like the quebecers for so long <laughs> the fucking quebecers for so long held the belts um so it was nice to see the million dollar corporation not winning this match but this era of wrestling suffered massively from lack of stars the same kind of mid-level stars okay with the odd kind of bret hart having the same matches time and time again because and i'm saying it for pretty much the fourth time in this review it was boring and i'm so glad we're coming to the end of this <laughs> of this story arc <laughs> holy shit yeah not great bad actually bad <laughs> <laughs> this is a bad show yeah i agreed with you there i spent yeah bammer stupid idiot falling to the ground selling for 43 seconds that's insane it's a good thing you're not main eventing wrestlemania <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of, post-match Bammer is hot and takes his frustration out on LT. Lettuce and tomato. (laughs) (laughs) This is a classic new gen moment. Possibly the classic. He's lost the match. Bammer's walking around the ring and the crowd are laughing at him and he's stop laughing at me, stop laughing at me. And LT is sitting there He's just having a good time and he's smiling and he's being friendly. Bammer gets all up in his grill. LT stands up and they have a little bit of a face off and then, you know, a a significant push. You know, he took a spill. But yeah, I'm impressed. I am impressed with LT took that, took Mm. that bump. 
it was nice to see what I would imagine is a very famous yeah, guy huge star. Yeah. In, in America. Put Bammer over big and they have a decent angle, so. Huh? One asterisk, he gets pushed. Big smile on him. Having a laugh. <laughs> oh, corpsing. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, send for the man. Um, Bammer was legit pissed off at that because this is the start of our feud. And he's, hey, hey, it's like the jackass lads. <laughs> We're bumping in the ring on Raw. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, we uh, apologize. We regret that unfortunate incident that we saw earlier. Hilarious. Later, Vince does his own voice and says, we apologize to Lawrence Taylor. And then he turns his back to the camera. For a while. Like, the camera lingers there. Yeah. yeah and <laughs> he turns his back on <laughs> Sir. <laughs> That's so disingenuous. <laughs> also, after the fall... Holy shit, Vince and Lawler go mental with the unbelievables. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, oh, I can't believe it. Who would have believed it? <laughs> Fucking hell. Crazy amount of unbelievables. I feel like a montage is hurtling in this episode. <laughs> Nickman, naive, beyond belief. What he was seeing right inside the ring is unbelievable, 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 yeah. Unbelievable. An unbelievable effort. An unbelievable history. Unbelievable. 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 But you know what else is unbelievable, my man? I cannot believe this. Unbelievable. 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 Action. You're unbelievable. Last year's Rumble match recap. It's the Royal Rumble match. Every man for himself, right? Watch the Heartbreak Kid take advantage of that situation. They pay special attention to when Sean helps eliminate Diesel. Yes. Even though the cameraman missed it. Yeah. And then we get a promo with Sean where he says that he can handle the big men. Much, <laughs> what? Much like he single-handedly handled diesel last year just after we see the clips of like four people trying to throw out diesel and sean is the fifth to go Whew! he's able to claim it because it's heat he calls it old hb himself as old hb himself he's the hb kid yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he loves ice cream <laughs> <laughs> i love it it's great uh, yeah so finish of last year's rumble saw brett and lex both go out meaning they were co-winners and we get a quickie lex promo Last year is over. 1995 is a new year. The rumble separates the men from the boys, the pretenders from the contenders. And I'm sick of being a contender. <laughs> <No>! <laughs> it's 1995 and Lex will not be denied. You fucking muppet. <laughs> you know what? I'm a little sick and tired of being a contender here in the Royal Wrestling Federation. Four matches down, one match left, because it's time for your murder warrant. It's time for your Royal Rumble murder warrant. <laughs> First out is Pamela Anderson, who's agreed to walk the winner to the ring for their WWF title match at WrestleMania. Remember that for Mania 11. <laughs> nips all over the place. <laughs> Jesus. Is it true that they edit the nips out on the network? Well, did you see nips? I wasn't looking for nips. Oh, your wife doesn't I listen mean... to this podcast. <laughs> You're safe. I thought it was dark. It was too dark. Okay. Number one, dun, 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 dun. ew, ew, Sean, it's the heartbreak kid. Oh, he's got TK on his wrist. Ah, Themis Clarides, both smart and pretty. A fitness trainer, a tourney, and WWF Raw Ring Girl. Made it to WWF Magazine a couple of times, and Sean credits her for helping him train for the Iron Man at Mania 12. Okay, is that the chick with the dark hair? Yes, very good. Ah, yes, because she's the one that 
people think of when they think of the ring card girls. Um, she is now a Connecticut state representative. Wow. Uh, it's funny because there was a heart over the TK and he kisses it. It's like, oh, in case you're paired with Pamela, it's good to get that on camera so you can see. <laughs> uh, oh, man, just Sean's in the ring dancing to his theme song. It was like, he is a master at dick bag hot dogging. Oh, please. Let me just tell you this, big man. Yeah. He loves being the number one draw because of what he's doing right now. Just dancing and stripping. <laughs> what a great heel. Uh, number two, it's the British Bulldog. Oily, tied back hair. And he's moved past the Timothee hair pretty quick, hasn't he? Yeah. Decent look for a Bulldog here. Probably his best. Not the wading jeans, though. <laughs> <laughs> number three, no theme song. Not the Berserker, but an equally wild-haired madman. It's Eli Blue of the Blue Brothers. Aha, uh-huh. when after the Harris Brothers, their dirty Dutch mantel was their manager. But fuck them, SS Nazis. So yeah. yeah. Oh, like uh, not characters. Came out in TNA, he had a fucking SS t-shirt. A t-shirt, an SS t-shirt on one of the weekly shows. Nazi punks, fuck off. Yeah. These guys were actual Nazis and they yeah. can actually fuck off. Yes. Mm-hmm. Number four is the dumpster, Duke the Shit Heap Drossy. Uh, okay, so his gimmick is he's a bin man. Uh, what do you call a female bin man? Bin person? That makes it sound like they're from Planet Bin. A, <laughs> a binstrel. <laughs> a binster. <laughs> a binster. <laughs> Maybe they're non binary. Oh, hey. Anyway. Oh, that went down you pretty. can't cut that. That was no? good. Is it yeah. okay? That was clever. He bear hugs Sean and we get a look at his weightlifter's belt. Huh, no back injuries for you, sir. Number five is Heavenly Bodies Gigolo Jimmy Del Rey. Okay. I've waited long enough. He's officially one of my boys. Oh, I wow. love this guy. Love this guy. Stable after dark here, get Steve. all over my stable. <laughs> 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 Why, what about this match? confirm this for you it's the fact that he was the first out he lasted about 40 seconds and it was like okay that's good enough mate welcome yes the territory lad knows exactly how to work he does a try eliminate sean spot but has his arm over sean's torso so he's in no danger no actual danger of falling out job done bully clotheslines out del rey number six head shrinker sioni Number seven. <laughs> At the other half of the Heavenly Bodies, Dr. Tom Pritchard and Vince with his biggest whopper. Is he gonna win the Rumble? Yes. <laughs> Number eight is Doink, who has Dink with him. Number nine, Quang, who was already running in when the horn sounded. Number ten is Rick Martel. That's one third of the combatants in. It was right at this point here where I've written down this new guy out every 60 seconds. It feels so fast and you've no time to come out and actually book anything. Uh, slow it down, lads. Come on. <laughs> the ordinate, mate. Slow it down <laughs> here, lads. Let it breathe. Mm. We'll have to say, Rick Martel, surely his gimmick of being a model fits perfectly into the new gen. Bring him back. You can have a model. You can have a bin man. You can have a farmer. A guitarist, you can have a man tar. <laughs> like, it's just, he fits right in with this kind of heavily gimmicked mid card, you know? But they didn't. Mm. Who's it gonna be? Oh, no. Oh, yeah! The hits just keep on coming. Here he comes. Number 11, the King of Hearts, Owen Hart, who is Pearl Harbored by Brett, as a receipt for likely costing him the WWF title earlier tonight. Double payday for Wurzel. Bring, bring, <laughs> payday fat. Cha ching, cha ching. And Jerry Briscoe? <laughs> <laughs> Who actually breaks up Brett and Owen. Well done, mate. Number 12, it's not Marty Gennetti, it's Timothy Well. With the biggest pop of his career, the crowd did not realize that it was Timothy Well coming out here. <laughs> A massive pop. <laughs> ah! <laughs> it was ridiculous because. He came out just as the first booked spot of this match was happening. And then the camera goes to him and they missed the spot. 
They miss ah. Owen going out of the road. That's what they were popping That's for. That's what they were popping you for. You can't prove that. <laughs> he so, watches so. this over and over again. <laughs> so, like, Timothy Well is like showing his kids, his yeah. grandkids, yeah. his great grandkids. <laughs> great grandkids. <laughs> See that time when I was over, lads? <laughs> great great grandkids. <laughs> All of them. It's not fair. Who is it? It's Everyone out of the pool. Duke gets dumped out. And we're told Owen was eliminated by Bully. Hilarious Schwab failure as Bully throws little Timmy, uh, Timmy Well here, to the corner to do the... <laughs> to do the uh, was he sending it, his love down? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he throws him into the corner to do the Ric Flair, uh, Ray Stevens spot, you know, inside out in the turnbuckle. And he just failed. He just goes... <laughs> <laughs> the official don't know. That is not fair! Fuck. Just crashes instead. He's hoofed out for his trouble. Then model. Then Pritchard. Shit doing too? Don't tease me. Quang kicks him out. Then Sioni and Eli clothesline each other out. Look at all of that. Look at this, man. There's two guys left. And it's the same two that started. Number 13, Bushwhacker Luke lasts a hot minute. And before going back out and Bushwhacker bounces to the back. <laughs> So that's the first part of the rumble done and dusted. We are back to where we started with Sean and Bully. Number 14 is the other brother, Jacob Blue. He wants to kind of eliminate himself like brother Eli, but Michaels isn't coming with him and just back body drops him out. Number 15. Oh no. <laughs> Unbelievable. It's King Kong Bundy. Number 16. It's Mo. 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 Fuck, he's already out. <sighs> Look at Mo. Oh, <laughs> Look at my watch. Mo was on a mission, wasn't he? He just broke, he just broke Luke's record. <laughs> Is this a record? Eight, was it eight seconds? Three seconds. Fuck. Number 17. It's Mabel. The fattest man squares off against the second fattest man, and together, himself and King Kong Bundy lean on the ropes. Quite sad. After Owen coming out, uh, being attacked by Brett, and being thrown over the top ropes, this is the second highlight of this match. (laughs) Two fat men staring at each other. (laughs) Yeah. You think you're special? (laughs) You do. (laughs) You think you're special? You do. Actually, in a couple of weeks... Bundy versus Mabel on Raw in a just eliminate each other match. Whoever throws the other over the top rope wins. And so they give it about 30 seconds and then Mill Dollar Corporation come in and they chuck out Mabel. And that's it. I watched that match. I was so annoyed. He <laughs> can't even give us the payoff to the fat fellas. <laughs> <laughs> they have to like Jared everything and nothing gets over and Fuck you, fans. <laughs> Fuck you, Britain. <laughs> Fuck you for your time. And, and yeah. Steve. Oh, I was so annoyed. <laughs> <laughs> Number 18 is Bushwhacker Butch. Sean whoops him out without much resistance. Number 19. Oh, my God. It's sexy, laxy. House of Fire bowls out Mabel. Big press slam to Michaels. But no. Oh, it's before Allied Powers, but I love how Lex and Bully are matching. They're yeah. both in red, yeah, white, yeah. and blue. Yeah, yeah. And they've also tagged twice on Raw in the build up, so they're absolutely setting that up, mm. which means that they're both getting de pushed. <laughs> so, you know, you have to take it with a grain of salt. A lot of that going on. An awful <laughs> lot <Yeah>. of that. <laughs> now, who are they making room for? Number 20, it's Mantar. Mantar coming in. <gasps> oh, fucking Mantar. The cut of him, he's a human potato. <laughs> he's like um, Ross and Friends with the Halloween episode. Oh, with the uh... Spudnik. Spudnik. <laughs> oh, yes, that's what he is. Oh, yeah. You know, Jimmy Cornette is really high on this man car. Hey, Cornette. Oh, here we go. Sorry. Can I just go over the next four minutes of this match, right? If you want to know the quality of wrestling you're getting <laughs> in January of 1995 <laughs> at 20 Mantor at 21 Aldo Mantoya the oh. Portuguese man of war mm-hmm. at number 22 Henry Godwin mm-hmm. at 23 
Billy Gunn. Mm. At number 24, Bart Gunn. That's five minutes, and that's the five wrestlers. <laughs> Killers Row. Killers Row in the final 10 of your <laughs> rumble. Yeah. This is who's coming out. Man, <laughs> Had way to get out of this era. <laughs> Lex Luger, who could have won the WWF title, you will recall, and the guest referee, many say, hey, wait a minute. It's Mr. Bob Backlund! Number 25, decent booze. It's straight backed Bob Backlund. Brett Pearl Harbor's Backlund, a receipt for the Crossface Chicken Wing earlier tonight. Wait a minute, wait a minute, Brett Hart, what in the world? And then a third Wurzel alert. Bring, bring, bring. Number 26, overseas boy, Stephen Dunn with Harvey Whippleman. Lexi sees Backland looking at Brett being sequestered on the outside and clotheslines Backland out. Mm-hmm. Oh yes, over the top, Backland out! Two of the biggest stars that were going to be in the match were Owen and Backland, and they were both just thrown out within seconds with no fanfare. Yeah, but Backland is done. They, He's Stephen Dunn. just put the best... <laughs> You just put the belt on him at the Survivor Series. Yeah, well, he's sorry, he's done. That's it. it like It's January. It's, it's Diesel, and, it, and that's the gravy train right now. The gravy truck? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> More of a, like a pool mobile. <laughs> yeah. yeah, with <laughs> gravy in it. <laughs> no sudden stops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know why they want to bury him, but there you go. Number 27, traditionally ascribed as the luckiest position. How about that? It's Dick Murdoch. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Did, did you recognise him when he came out? I wouldn't have if I didn't watch Raw in the build because uh, during Todd's uh, Royal Rumble report, he made special note of Dick Murdoch being in the Rumble twice. I, I still don't understand why. It's a big return. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah, zero reaction. I'm not surprised at it. Kind of territory guy. Ow, lad. Thin hair. Terrible shape. Boring plain jocks. Fuck him, though, because he's actually a KKK member. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. The story goes is that one time he actually took Dusty to a clan rally and he didn't tell him where they were going. It's like, ha-ha. Oh, it was a rib. And then Tony Atlas and Tommy Rich, he's like, oh, you should go to this thing, this nice whatever thing in the park. It was a fucking clan rally. And they had to duck down and hightail it out of there. Jesus Christ. And he's like, I fobbed it off. Oh, it's, I didn't think you'd actually go. Yeah, so get fucked. Like. Oh, dear. A lot of clan in this. Fa- where's where's Clanville? You know, they could be their own fucking <laughs> faction. The WWF Superstar Line is wide open. Jay, do you remember about two or three minutes ago when I went over (laughs) numbers 21 to 24 and how shit the new gen was? What about number 27 to number 30? How does that make you feel? Here we go. So at number 27, we have the one, the only Dick Murdoch. At number 28, we have Adam fucking Broom, (laughs) who hasn't even been featured once on television in the eight weeks of Raw leading up to this show. At number 29, we have Fatu. And at number 30, the big kahuna, Crush himself. Yeah, give Crush a pass. Fuck me, what a roster. <laughs> Lads, that's nine of the last ten in your rumble are fucking geeks. <laughs> They're nobody go nowhere. <laughs> geeks. Geeks. <laughs> <sighs> Lexi rope wobbles Mantor out. Um, I love that spot. <laughs> Did you like how Dick Murdoch, big barrel of shite here, <laughs> just as Crush <laughs> is knocking out the uh, two guns, he's like, well, watch this. And he saunters over. <laughs> meh, 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 meh. <laughs> and he helps Crush push them out. So in the record books, he got two eliminations in this match. Dickhead. Uh, well done. Dick Murdoch. Yeah, yeah, Dick Murdoch. Exactly. <laughs> Heel Crush Bra immediately dumps out both of the guns. 
And then Stephen Dunn too. <laughs> Stephen's done. <laughs> <laughs> Back to busy work for the next few minutes so we can all catch our breath before the big finish. Just looking around the ring. Holy shit, the roster. Here's our final 10. Okay, we got Sean. Bomb. Lex. Crushbra. Montoya. Little Timmy. Head Shrinker A. Head Shrinker B. <laughs> Dickie Murdoch. And the Bully. So we got three possible winners here. Uh, Sean, Bully, and Dickie Murdoch. <laughs> <laughs> Hilariously though, Murdoch, actually, he almost eliminates HBK uh, in a spot. Uh, I enjoyed that. Uh, and he does an on all fours headbutt with Fatu. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And he sells it. That was funny. It has no belt. Don't do that with Fatu. No, you don't. Okay, time for the wrestle has to fuck off so we can get to the closing spots. Adam Bomb is first. Montoya, you're next. Then Fatu. Vince Bellows, can you imagine Dick Murdoch winning the Royal Rumble? As he tries to airplane spin dump out Godwin, but eliminates himself. Dumb shit Godwin runs over the top as Sean feigns trying to eliminate Lex. Like he's so bollocks, he just rests his arms on Lex. Train crash in the corner and Lex falls out. Heels double team Davy Boy, but turn on each other. Sean ducks and Crush eats Bully's clothesline, which sends a bra to the back. Michael saving himself. We're back to where we started. It's the British Bulldog versus Shawn Michaels, and the crowd stamped their feet in approval. Shawn springs to life. Beep. <laughs> <laughs> Lunar bumping for the turnbuckle kicks up, up, and in. Press slam into the rope, splits. Big clothesline, Shawn's out. Bulldog's music plays as it zooms in close to Bulldog. Sean Pearl Harbor's bully with an axe handle sending him out. Hard-nipped Pamela looks on as we only hear one of Sean's feet touch the floor. Uh, Sean Michaels is going to WrestleMania. The Heartbreak Kid! Wait a minute, we have a replay! Slow motion replay of HBK teasing both feet touching the floor. Sean hot dogs with Pamela Anderson behind him looking awkward. Of course, she's no idea about the storylines as such, but it, it works as he's a heel and she shouldn't be impressed by him. By the way, Anderson said to be excellent to work with. Uh, Royal Rumble was built around her appearance. Not any of the matches or actual talents. But it worked. 25,000 more buys than last year. Ah. Yeah, she did not want any of Sean. She came in, she was like, oh, who's this sweaty dude? Uh, Wallety dude. <laughs> yeah, and she was there for about 10 seconds, and then she just got out of the ring. <laughs> so, Shawn Michaels wins the Royal Rumble in an iconic moment at OSC. Big fan, big fan. What do you think, OSC? So, Sean gets clotheslined over the top rope, but you can quite clearly see Sean in the background hanging onto the ropes. And there's lots of swaying of legs back and forth, back and forth. I don't know what the key point was where he should stop doing this, but he way passed it. And it turned into farce then. Even at the time, I thought it made Bulldog look like a fool. But the right man won. Really impressed with the Bulldog to stay in for the entire match. Fully expected that from the likes of Sean. Not from Bulldog. I know he didn't do as much as Sean in the match, but I, I still, that's good work. The obvious candidates for lasting the full time, HBK, Brett, Owen, Kid, Double J. I'm going to throw in Aldo Montoya. I know he can do it. Mm. And Backland. But for Bulldog to come in there and do that, that's good. And Dickie Murdoch. And Dick, Dickie, Dickie, <laughs> Dickie M. Oh, well, the um, power of the clan behind him. He can do anything. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he should have been the druid in the robe. Oh, you know? <laughs> Um, it's, it's not a terrible rumble. It's not a good rumble, but you know, it's quick. It's rare that there's only a, a handful of people in the ring. That's when a rumble to me is boring when you're just waiting for more people to come in. It's usually, the ring is usually quite full. Now, in terms of star power, instead of saying there are no stars, because any stars the company do have are in other matches other than say, Sean, maybe Bulldog. In terms of relative star power, I count seven people who were in this match that legitimately could have won it. And that's not a bad return. 
Seven? Yeah. I would like to hear this seven. Okay, these are the ones who could have won it, in my opinion. HBK, Bulldog, Owen, Lex, Backland, Crush, maybe not this year, but... Mm, yeah, 93, definitely. Yeah, even 94. And Mabel. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! It's a uh, slim uh, pickings. Yeah. So, yeah, thumbs up, yeah. It's okay. Okay. It was never boring. That's my big positive. I thought it moved at a nice brisk pace, although because it moved so quickly, there was no time for booking, for spots, for angles, for anything other than coming out, moving to the ropes and jostling with other wrestlers. Although I did like the overall story of one and two going the distance and them having their final battle. Um, I couldn't give this match a thumbs down. To me, it was my favourite thing on the show. Okay. All right. Congratulations to Sean. Eight eliminations and the pay-per-view is remembered solely on that iconic controversial finish. The boat feet point is now the Shawn Michaels rule. Uh, having it every 60 seconds was a fantastic idea. Really livened up the pace. It was frantic. Also hid the fact that there were very, very little actual spots and drama outside Sean's. It was mostly people coming in, hug the ropes until it's time to get clotheslined out. Went to 38-41, much shorter match, obviously to aid HBK and Bulldog, who'd be going the distance, as opposed to like a 56-minute bout where Vincent K. McMahon literally leaves for most of it. And when he comes back, it's on commentary. (laughs) This was the shortest 30-man Royal Rumble in history. Not the shortest Rumble of all time. That's the 88 Rumble, the first one. That was 33 minutes, but it only had 20 men. So, yeah. But right now, Sean, the overall best talent in the US. So they made kind of the best of a horrific situation. Holy God, though, this roster. Like, if the Rumble is a roster gut check, then the new gen, it's got a hernia. It's like... And that's it. Do you want me to read out some of the absolute garbage who was in this match? Top 10 garbage in the row. I don't know. There might be like match. top 23 garbage. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Eli Blue. Yes. Duke Drosy. Yes. Tom Pritchard. Yep. Quang. Fuck. Timothy Well. Jesus. Bushwhacker Luke. Come on. Jacob Blue. Get out. Ted Bundy. <laughs> Shut off. <laughs> Mo. Eat it. No, I love you, Mo. Mabel. Fuck off. Bushwhacker man. Butch. Squeeze out. Mantor. Aldo Aww. Mantoya. <laughs> I don't know what Henry Gunn. Gunn. Words sounds like. Billy Gunn, Aww. Bart Gunn. Pew pew. Stephen Dunn. <laughs> Dick Murdoch. Adam Bomb. Bernator. Fatu. <laughs> and Crush. It's out. That's like Bra. 80% of this rumble is is trash. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, good time. <laughs> Pack your bags, let's get the fuck out of here. Oh my god. And take it to the aftermath. We certainly hope, ladies and gentlemen, you have enjoyed the WWF 1995 Royal Rumble. Welcome to the aftermath. V1, sir, what did you think of the 1995 Royal Rumble? 10 on 10. Okay, yeah. Yeah, Agreed. It's not the worst show that I've watched, but it's one of the worst shows. And you've seen King of the Deathmatch. (laughs) God. (laughs) You know, it's weird. Like, it doesn't have the lows of Doink and other small people versus King and other (laughs) small people. Like that, like that's the dirt worst of what we've mm. we've watched. Mm. So nothing goes down that far, but nothing is great. Um, the opener was fun. I like that Jared is the new champion. I thought him and Razor worked well. Taker IRS was awful. I really didn't like Brett and Diesel. Oh. Uh, I was disappointed because I thought Brett would be able to carry Diesel to a good match. The tag match wasn't great, and the Rumble was nice and quick, but. The star power in it was depressing. Although I did like the bully and Sean. Um, so overall, like, the, the, don't watch this show. It's not worth it. Go and watch 1989 Rumble or something like that. 1990, so much fucking better. I'd say the same thing, except I loved the Brett and Diesel match. I thought it was fucking me. It was just Brett Hart. Let's just hang out with Brett. Look, look <laughs> at Brett beat the shit out of Diesel. Make him look like a fool. 
and uh well holy shit <laughs> yeah <laughs> the rest of it oh my god it's toxic like the toxic turtles <laughs> who are p- barreling down the uh, <laughs> pipe <laughs> here in the what do you think Luke? yeah i was watching this and taking notes and i wanted to get positives from this pay-per-view because i know and you can cut this but i know that you don't like recording a show that's negative like fine to have negative things in it but you want to be light-hearted and have a laugh and all and it's very difficult from this pay-per-view to get any as i said boring 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 there's not what can you do with boring the worst yeah like with the jerry lawler and and the little people stuff there's stuff there that you can get get your teeth into there's bollocks yeah whereas this is just (laughs) eh? there's not a lot going on in this pay-per-view and it's you know, it's going to be like a pretty drab review. <laughs> <laughs> so long, everybody. We were so close to 100. It just snuffed us out at the end. We got Bob Holly. <laughs> Don't worry. I know WrestleMania 11 is going to be so much better. I know it is. Like, I mean, better in terms of like, there's a lot of bollocks in it. Okay. But Steve! Okay, let's get out of the new generation. Not quite yet, but it's the what happened on Raw. Sincere apology for the unprofessional conduct of Scott. Bam Bam Bigelow yesterday at the Royal Rumble. Keep even full of face, cold open Vince apologizes for Scott Bam Bam Bigelow shoving LT. It's raw! January 23rd, 1995, live from the Manatee Civic Center in Palmetto, Florida. Vinnie Mac introduces tonight's color commentator, the Royal Rumble winner, HBK Shawn Michaels. Oh yeah, Shawn Michaels! I know how it pains everybody. I know how it must pain everybody to have to hear me say that I told you so, I told you so. As Vince mouths, I told you so, look at the mic, the flash on it. The Raw logo is inverted blue on white. Mm. HBK on commentary always had these fun, smarky quips, uh, like calling Diesel a cowardly lion, and he'll send them back to Oz. Oz, yeah. It looks like the cowardly lion, and when he faces the heartbreak kid, I'm going to send him back. Smoking Guns get their do-over for the Rumble, facing Lightning Kid and Sparky for the WWF Tag Titles. Man, seeing Bob Holly with the tag title. Pissed me off. <laughs> <laughs> the Rockers never officially held the belts, but this cunt has. Oh, Snarky Sean says, in celebration last night, the kid was fed milk and cookies. Oh, what a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> kid and Sparky get trounced. Hot tag the Bart. Big back body drop the kid. Twirling sidewalk slam into a famouser. Double Russian leg sweep into an ad break. Delayed vertical suplex with a drop kick. Vince puts Bob over. He's a race car driver. He's a WWF superstar. And then he eats some shoe leather. Sean snorts. He's an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Bob Holly on the top rope. Oh, no. <laughs> this match Billy was really bad it's like are you hung over or something because like Bart does all the work Billy comes in for literally one move and then tags back out like Bart is still huffing gasping for breath you can't hmm. finish of the match Butt Plug takes a one shoulder backbreaker into a top rope leg drop and unbelievable one two three the tag title reign is toast in 1520 Who won the titles? The oh. Smoking Guns. Bang, mm. bang, Bart. Yeah. Bang, bang, Bart. And then post-match interview with the losers. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Bitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's like, uh, a gallant effort. Congratulations, Bob. And he's like, thank you, Vince. <laughs> Nonetheless, a gallant effort. Congratulations, Bob. Thank you, Vince. One, two, three years, like, yeah, so I'm disappointed. <sighs> I just want to talk about that. It wasn't very fair. That we had to defend our titles 24 hours after we win. Even though we agreed to it before. <laughs> yeah. But you agreed to it. He's like, yeah, but it wasn't really fair. Um, I'd like a rematch. And I just have it here. He was indeed a little bitch. <laughs> 
<laughs> Get out the uh, baby powder. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, Lightning Spark. They did actually get the rematch the following week, and which kid I watched. Does a kind of a neck injury angle. Uh, one, two, three. Kid went to do like a cannonball off the top rope. Bart gets out of the way. Uh, he gets the hot tag. Billy runs in and he wants to just kick lumps out of this little shithead, <laughs> and he banked the bitch. <laughs> and he sees him on the canvas having a fit. And he just kind of like backs away. People come out. The matches ended. And then about five minutes later on the show, Vince goes, we have an update. He's grand. <laughs> <laughs> he, he just got up and walked out. He didn't want to go to the hospital. He's grand. <laughs> and Not that's a the end of it, is it? And that's the end of it. Yeah. They do absolutely nothing with it. Thank you, Vince. IRS with the urn in his fingers and DiBiase in tow versus the deadly Buck Quartermain. Who, by the way, coming off a win on the Royal Rumble countdown show where he beat the Brooklyn Brawler. A one match streak. Is this a jobber? I've never heard he's of this He's a guy. jobber who's been featured on Raw recently. Like he's been like in maybe three or four of the last six or seven weeks. And he just got a random win. So he's doing better than Adam Baum, is what you're saying? Yes, he's doing better than Razor as well. <laughs> <laughs> Shyster dissects the jobber so we can listen to Rowdy Roddy Piper, who's on the phone. What does he say? Can I shock you? I loved the pay-per-view last night. <laughs> I watched the Royal Rumble and I, I gotta call it as I see it. I am extremely proud of the new generation. Vince segues to Piper chatting about LT, but the tax man snuffs out Quarterman too quickly with a write off. Ah, well, tidy work in 219. The WWF Encore Plus on pay per view. Count of three here. IRS wins the match. WWF Week in Music with your boy, Man Mountain Rock. Superstars of the World Wrestling Federation, prepare yourself. It's time for school. Hello, guy who can't make the top 30 new generation superstars, even when you take out the world champion IC and tag champion and their challengers. Yep. He plays a solo over the Rumble theme. So what's the segment? No, that's it. (laughs) (laughs) King's Court with (laughs) the new Intercontinental Champion Double J, Jeff Jarrett, with the roadie too. Do you see some cunt in the front row? He's just bought one of those foam belts it's still in the plastic wrapper and he holds it up just as Jeff Jarrett is about to reveal his newly won intercontinental champion this fucking twat just goes (laughs) and it's ruined forever in all of history Jarrett's great (laughs) reveal is dead it's gone Uh, Lawler sees (laughs) Lawler tees his Tennessee buddy up what's next on the Ain't I Great Tour 95 why the WWF title in Diesel if you got the guts? And Sean actually quips in here. He doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> Diesel, if you've got the guts Which he to accept my challenge. Uh, it's your raw uh, main event. No, no, sorry. No. <laughs> British Bulldog, Davy Boy Smith in action because they're too embarrassed to tell you it's versus the Black Phantom. So the last time the Black Phantom wrestled, you said it was Gangrel. Yeah, well done. Is yeah. it still? It is. Uh, it's just in great shape. Gangers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he hasn't got the kind of the belly. No, he's looking No, great. he's in yeah. good shape. Yeah. yeah. And slim and black too. He's got the Brian Christopher shrill taunt. He's like, ah! Jeez. <laughs> and Xbox watch offs. And that was unbelievable. Never letting you gentlemen in WWF. And Davey Boy Smith. Oh, my goodness. The British Bulldogs to our oh no a front pile driver or crying Christopher. Davy gives Sean abuse and he retorts with a cry baby. <laughs> I will not you. Jobber Heath misses a Brett's rope splash and takes a running power slam. Bully breezes past the Phantom in three twelve. Down in a candle. A cover. A count. And the Bulldogs victorious and looking straight at you, Sean. Like- uh, and it, and it, no. no, absolutely not. <laughs> New gen tech problems as Bammer can't hear Vince and so is unable to give his apology. Ooh. Was this shoot or is this Bammer playing it because he didn't want to say sorry? Yeah, yeah it, was a, it was a work. Okay, yeah. okay. It's very clear. I thought wasn't it was sure. clever booking. It was actually done well because I wasn't sure. And he has to pretend to not hear Vince. <laughs> and, he, and, and he's like checking his watch yeah. going like, 
can we just get this over with? <laughs> Sorry, it's a shoot. <laughs> it's art. <laughs> hey, hey, can we just get this over with? <laughs> So join us if you would next week, ladies and gentlemen. Can we get this over with? Monday. Come on, man. Uh, and that was raw. <laughs> what are they building up to then? LT Bammer. Yeah. Hmm. That's it. On this show, that's the only thing. Maybe Sean, who is on commentary with Vince, like he's he like he's kind of working his own stuff and he's just talking about how great he is and how he made Diesel and he's going to win the title. And that's about it. Yeah, yeah, nothing raw, tag titles included. Uh, apart from getting to listen to HBK all night, that was great. I thought Vince actually really tested Sean as he went after him the entire show, giving him no respect. No respect at all. No congrats for winning the Rumble, calls Sean sneaky. Uh, HBK retorts, you can't stand it, I'm all there is. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a shoot. You really, you really can't stand it, can you? Why don't you just admit it? I'm all there is. Uh, I thought Sean did very well, very sharp, full personality, and he'd only get better. Obviously, he's fucking incredible. Like One of the all-time greats. Yeah. And so let's take it through the wrestling is. Awesome segment. Get over here. Awesome. That is it. OSW95 Royal Rumble 1995 in the bag. Oh, on the books. In the pocket. I was say. How did you think that went, Duke? Really, really great. Not like mentally. <laughs> no, yeah. no, it's a tough, tough old slot. <laughs> it wasn't actually. Hopefully, it, it makes easy. a good show. Though. I don't know. It was a, it was a very easy watch. Mm. Yeah. So it was an easy watch. Yeah, two and a half hours. Yeah. Very easy. tidy. Tight, tight. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, what is coming up next? Oh my God, we have uh, like our final shows of the new generation, which is the OSW Mountain Dew, KFC, Gold Honey, Mustard, Barbecue, Gotta Be, Gotta Be, Domino's, Pre-Show, <laughs> <laughs> and WrestleMania 11 itself. <laughs> uh, be one, what's happening on Twitch, buddy? Every Friday night, get some kisses from the missus. Hates us so much. Kisses from the missus. Kisses from the missus. Kisses from the missus. So bad. Yeah. Yeah, so we're still working our way through the OSW catalog. Just recently finished our TNA arc, which, in my opinion, is pound for pound our funniest stuff. Yeah. I fucking love it. It's We had so much fun watching it. The amount of bollocks is off the charts. So yeah, we gotta uh, go there again one day. Oh, absolutely. So yeah, come uh, join us every Friday at about ten o'clock Irish time. Twitch.tv forward slash OSW Review, and I also stream many great games uh, <laughs> during the week. So yeah, nice come save, uh, nice. join me. Yes, uh, and as you know, all of our future Patreon content is free on YouTube to help you get through this kind of shit time in the world. So uh, you can watch everything we've released so far at lockdown.oswreview.com. Excellent. And if you're feeling jaunty, spicy, piratey, mandatory, mountain rocky, quangy, hakushi, kazunpei. I hate that gimmick, by the way. (laughs) <laughs> Jobby <laughs> Smoking Gunny Eli Bluey Oh fuck me Jacob Bluey Oh Dick Morducky <laughs> yeah, Nobody's yeah. feeling Dick Morducky <laughs> no. no Only the races <laughs> <laughs> You can Slip us a couple of books uh, Watch them Ox Glossop uh, Reviews Films Thoughts Feelings Shapes Colours Yes <laughs> And all that good stuff At 
nuggeru.osoreview.com. Fucking terrible. <laughs> That's the gimmick. Thank you. And so we shall see you next time for OSW 96. So it's a goodbye from V1. Take care, Boo. Oh, is he? Boo. And myself, Jay Hunter. And remember, a winner is you. <laughs> 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 <laughs>